episode of the podcast of Bronze and Iron. It's been a while, but we're back. And today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host JR Rowley from Geek Chat One, as we have a lot to discuss with some Game of Thrones season eight pictures coming around and some great news for Con of Thrones 2019. JR, shall we jump right into it? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Glad to be back and uh, getting back into Bronze and Iron. This will be absolutely fantastic. And we are currently, what, 57 days away from the season premiere of the final season of Game of Thrones. So a lot of stuff is starting to move and come out. And we are 146 days away from Con of Thrones 2019. So we're going to talk about um, the, new, the newly released, uh, well, it's last week. But uh, Game of Thrones Season 8 pictures, the first set of photos that we got for Season 8. We're going to talk about all the characters, and we got some awesome Con of Thrones news and some other things to talk about for the premiere of Game of Thrones Season 8. JR, which character should we start off with today? Uh, I was thinking just go ahead and go in order and start with Cersei. Uh, she's looking pretty mean mugging in all these uh, production photos. She looks actually pretty sad. I mean, is she about to cry in this photo? That's, that's almost what it what it looks like. I mean, we're not really talking about what she's actually doing, but I mean, she does look inherently sad and, and you know, with no context to go with it, we can only speculate what the hell is actually going on at this moment. I mean, it looks like somebody just killed Sir Pounce, right? <laughs> yeah, we got the news that Sir Pounce is... All right, arrest in pepperonis, R.I.P. Sir Pounce. But Cer Cersei, I mean, I'm just looking at the reflection. I'm looking at it way close up here. Yeah. Maybe she has just had the death of a child. Cersei doesn't get emotional like this too often. And if she really is pregnant, she wasn't stringing Jamie along. This could be a moment where we see... She miscarried. Yeah. Because I, I, we're going to have the... The, the whole death and life theme, there's going to be these juxtaposed characters that we're going to have that mm -hmm. are going to have this positive impact and negative impact. And I think that, I, I think that we're going to talk about John and Daenerys after. I think they're having a kid, but I think that Cersei is going to lose her child. Yeah, and we've talked about that several times on various things, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't think Cersei is going to actually carry that baby to term. I don't think that's a possibility at this point for her character. One thing that's also interesting in this scene, I mean, the, her, her, what she's wearing is absolutely fantastic. She uh, has an amazing costume. Uh, like, yeah, that's what, that's really what we're commenting on here. I, you know, the pauldrons are are quite a bit changed from uh, the previous season, right? I mean, they look like cheese graters, like she's Shredder Jr. in this picture. It's kind of funny. I mean, I, I don't know, like, I would love to talk to the people who designed her costume and, and, and ask why. Obviously, I think we'll figure out more reasons why after season eight is over. Perhaps maybe someone will come to Con of Thrones and explain this, but I I, I really wanted to see her wearing the, uh, something protecting her 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 throat because of and it's, and it does. Yeah, and it kind of does. I mean, with that enhanced stalker that's coming up very high. I mean, Cersei never really wore anything like that in previous seasons that I can recall. She always had a very open and, and aired uh, neck area. I, I think back to the dress that she wore. In, yeah, more, more, more like wedding. fancy dress it's, for like royal uh, right. dresses. Yeah, very, very royal dresses. I mean, this is very much armoring up. This is very much uh, akin to... Uh, battles going on around her kind of but like that, what the mountain is wearing i mean like, uh, yeah, yeah it's kind of getting to that point right she keeps adding armor pieces in it, it, it's it's super interesting um you know and she you know her hair is going a little bit we don't know how much time is passed that is going to be passing when we first see cersei obviously um i, I think they're you know maybe like a day time jump or something Maybe not. I know that we're we're definitely going to see the Night's Watch and what happens with that. I think the Night King is going to deal with the Night's Watch in the first episode at the Wall uh, before he goes and ravages the North. But it's going to be really interesting to see kind of where Cersei char Cersei's character goes. And these pictures are apparently from the first uh, episode. Right, so, they're from episode one, allegedly. I mean, we're al just allegedly, and I, I don't know if they necessarily be giving us like stuff in episode six because it would. I mean, it would it would be spoilery. So. This is really interesting. I like 
final predictions for this photo. Yeah, I she's definitely emotional. Maybe she's also getting news that Jamie has teamed up with the Starks and she's finally realizing that she's really like her that ally. That she is alone she's, in the world, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, so. and you know that is a terrible realization to make, but by your own actions, you've you've caused this to happen. Uh, and it might be that moment of self reflection that we're we're seeing a glimpse of, uh, perhaps. But uh, really like the pauldrons and what they did with them, and enhancing them even more from last season. And we both commented on it that high stockered collar uh, around her neck. Uh, you know that's typically worn to protect from sword slashes and other things. But here you go and. Now we have uh, maybe some throat protection. So there, there's another picture. That's one of her sitting on the throne. Uh, there's also one where she's like near multiple corridors. Um, she looks pretty sad in these ones too. And, and looking uh, back, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think this is, you know, uh, con convoking the sentiment that we just talked about, Dr. that she is, you know, she look, she's obviously alone in these pictures, all, all except for a few of the pictures, mostly characters just by themselves. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the vibe that I'm getting from it anyways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, don't forget guys that the link for the article that we're actually viewing is going to be in the description of the video. So you can follow along and scroll with us as we're looking through these. Yeah. Watchers on the wall, always great content. This article is from Petra who is fantastic. She'll be at Call of Thrones. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, amazing writers. Uh, Luca, Sue, uh, Petra, uh, I believe Joe Oz. Magician. Yeah, Oz, Joe Magician. So watch Gem, Gem, is, Gem has contributed. There's yeah the, a bunch of people that we are good friends with. Have and, they have an, and they have an awesome podcast. We're going to have uh, Vanessa yeah. Cole on the podcast at some point. Uh, JR, yeah, let's, let, let's get to Tyrion Lannister. He's in the second photo. Um, he, he's, he's got, I don't know who he's talking to, but this is kind of where, I think this is where, um, Littlefinger and Sansa had their conversation. It looks like a similar type of balcony. Right. Area. This is, yeah. This is definitely Winterfell. I don't think there's any question about that. And this is, yeah, that second landing or that tier that surrounds the courtyard in Winterfell. Um, then yeah, there's been many conversations that have transpired on this. In fact, this is where we start when we meet the Starks, isn't it? Mm, so this is. This is really interesting. I mean, who is he get? I mean, this is a concerned look from Tyrion. Very we've concerned. Seen, we've seen this look before. I'm I'm thinking that this actually might be this could be Sansa. This could be him and Sansa having a serious conversation or or someone telling him something that he doesn't necessarily like. Um he uh, he obviously knows about the John and Daenerys romance. Uh we saw the reaction that he had after Boat Sex happened. Yeah, Boat Sex 1.0. Boat Sex 1.0 happened last season. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see who he is talking to in this moment. Tyrion is going to be very central. Uh, he's going to be a character that holds other characters together. He's, he's, he's going to be in between so many uh, different decision-making processes and all of that. He's very intelligent. Obviously, he, you know, last season didn't make the best calculations. Um, but, you know, Tyrion is still a very, very valuable member and sharp mind that is going to be needed in, in the War for Dawn. So I'm really interested to see who he's talking to in, in this scene, man. He looks upset. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna speculate on who he's actually talking to. Uh, Tyrion, being of not average height, would be looking up at most everybody. His head would be tilted back, and this one he's not. Uh, I think this might be a conversation with Bran because he's looking parallel. Uh, oh. And Bran's in a wheelchair, right? Uh, so I think this is a conversation with Bran, and it's going to be a very, very disconcerting one uh, as far as Tyrion's concerned, just judging by the look on his face, isn't it? Yeah, man, I'm looking at the reflection in his eye here. I, I, I can't really tell, but I mean, it's going to be... I really would love... and. I've talked about this before. Bran, Samuel, and Tyrion all getting together. The the three biggest minds in, in Westeros at this point, right? You know, you can add Davos in that conversation because he's probably the most wise. Yeah, yes, he, he is very much a wise character, um, which is different than knowledge, which is different than educated, which is different. You know, it actually has a different meaning, a different context. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean, as far as educated accessibility and researching ability that is the trifecta powerhouse <laughs> yeah. um we can argue that this this is the real three heads of the dragon uh, uh, i mean you, i mean one could make the argument i mean the, I, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to it 
cost costuming wise just from this picture though i like what they've done with the texture it looks like dragon scale you know that he's part of uh the targaryen uh family or extended family that is daenerys's court uh i, I like it it looks really good i like the dragon scale on under his doublet that's coming up on his neck as well yeah it, it, it's it's a really nice i mean the costumes on thrones are fantastic i mean we could go on and on about that I, and i and i'm assuming they are there uh for season eight they're gonna be i mean make sure oh, they're gonna be immaculate yeah so in this scene you think bran i think it could be sansa and they could be talking about something that is is concerning to them but i actually See, like that, that i absolutely wouldn't hate if it was on the on this upper deck of winterfell overlooking the courtyard right because if it's Tyrion and sansa having a conversation like ned it, and catlin exactly yeah. right when the, right when it opens i mean this is literally how we meet the starks in the very beginning of episode one right and Arya shoots the arrow and nails a bullseye and uh you know we learn that winter is coming and that he won't be a boy forever and it, it's kind of you know calling back to all those emotions that we were invoking in in, in those opening scenes of, of thrones as it were so very interesting photo there from Tyrion lannister and still but, the hand of the queen which i love i, I love that. that pendant and then we have john snow he's looking somber <laughs> and uh he's, <laughs> but but doesn't he always he, he's returned to Winterfell, so this is, uh, I'm assuming, going to be after they are received in Winterfell with Daenerys, and he's looking on, and it looks, uh, in the background, it looks like they are preparing for the arrival of the Night King, maybe there looks like there could be some trebuchets um, uh, that, that they're installing within, like, is this outside Winterfell or inside Winterfell? Uh, th this might be on the, the old wall, mm. the, the first wall. Or, or no, this would be the second wall, wouldn't it? The exterior, yeah, because it yeah. grew outward from the the core corridor. And, and uh, I know, so and I know they wall. they extended the set. They uh, especially especially for season eight, they uh, they they built on top of what they already had for the Winterfell set. They made it even bigger. So this bigger. is and the yeah. biggest, the largest green screen ever constructed for outdoor shooting. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So this is an interesting photo. Um, John. Not much, not much to talk about costume wise. I mean, yes, he's wearing northern gear. Of course, he would be. Why wouldn't he be? Uh, but yeah, the background is the most cool thing to look at in this, and that the preparations are being made. We don't know exactly what, but the courtyard is busy with activity. I don't think he's learned about his heritage yet in this photo. Something just gives me that vibe. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, hard to discern for sure, but yeah, no, I don't think he knows quite yet. So it, he he's got you know the look of like there there something's gonna go down like he's concerned I think um, he's definitely concerned obviously he, I mean he's been one of the characters that's been primarily focused on the 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 real threat uh, that that's going to be coming so not too much more that we can say about this picture but there's another there's John Daenerys photos after which we can check right. out uh, here's Arya and this looks like it could I mean. She, her outfit looks awesome. It kind of um, the the throw over the leather that she has looks a lot like the the pattern that you see in the House Stark direwolf for the show. So that's really interesting. She's obviously got the dagger that Bran gave her, and she's got a needle there. So, um, what's happening with Arya in this scenario? Is this the arrival of? Uh, the the mother of dragons Daenerys Targaryen and Arya is looking at that. That's that's my guess. I think she is looking at Danny going, "Oh, what the fuck did you do, John?" Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, seriously, it has that vibe. Like right off the bat, I mean, you're looking at her. She's like, "Ooh, I don't know about this." Um, you know, not the reunion I wanted for Arya and John. Uh, we've talked about that quite a bit in previous podcasts and on uh, different shows at various times. Uh, I really wanted John and Arya to meet in her room again because it'd be a nice bookend to how they last left in yeah. the second episode of season one. Uh, that's when, another... and that's when John gave Arya needle. Correct. And so I really wanted to bookend that. I thought it'd be a nice touch, but it looks like they're fully receiving Queen Daenerys in the style of receiving uh, Bobby B and Queen Cersei in the courtyard of Winterfell. It looks like everybody's lined up. And I'm wondering if they panned back on this shot, if they if they pulled back, if it would be looking in the same positions of the Starks when they first greet uh, Bobby B in his court, right? 
I wonder, you know, if if Daenerys is going to have any physical contact. She doesn't know these people, but certainly, you know, the curse of Bobby B theory is out there. So this is going to be right. really interesting to see it, yeah, how this it, goes down. It will be really interesting. I, I'm, um, you know, I, I'm kind of excited to see how they how they framed this shot and how they pulled it off. And um, what about what about if Gendry is with them too? Yeah, that that's certainly going to be interesting too. And you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to say like, you know, oh, Sansa is not going to like Daenerys, or Arya will be very skeptical. Well, it all depends on the happiness of John. I think for Arya, and I think that t- uh, she. Oh, I agree. She, she will see that John's happy, and I think that more so. Uh, Arya is intelligent. Don't get me wrong, but I think that I, I think that she's going to be happy to see John happy. So I'm I'm, I'm hoping that that's what's going to go down with Arya and Daenerys. They they are actually quite similar. Like they are people that have taken action. I mean, they they are uh, independent in their in their own ways. They have a lot in common. So I think I actually think that Arya and Daenerys are going to get along. I, I think they will too, and I think inside of her training is probably going to be more in depth than the books. Obviously, this is inherently show uh, conversation that we're having right now. Yeah. But uh, within the training that she received, the gamma lies and everything else, she has a, a overpowered and like she is anyway. She has a very op sense of being able to read people, and I I hope they keep playing on that that piece of it. Her bullshit uh, radar, yeah. Yeah, her bullshit radar, right? And, and she has that innate ability. So when she sees that John's happy and that Daenerys is happy-ish, I mean, I don't know really where Danny's feelings are going to be exactly coming into Winterfell. It could be pretty awkward for sure. It, it, it could be very awkward. And what's interesting too is like in the books, the Starks, they, they all have warging ability or a, a connection with their dire wolves. In the show, they try to make them individualized in a way where they all have a certain quality that the other one doesn't necessarily have. And it's really interesting. You know, we talk about Arya being able to sense, like tell if someone is lying and she learned, and she learned a lot of that in the house of black and white show. Version. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm glad they touched on that in the show, uh, but it's way more in depth, obviously. And then cat of the canals and other stuff from the books were, you know, looking through, she basically works a cat to figure out who's beating her uh, when she's blinded, <laughs> right? Right. So I, you know, I wish we would have got a little bit more of that and a little bit more cat of canals. But you know, I get, a, I understand you got to cut down for time in in some regard. Yeah. So we we don't know the exact runtime of the episodes, but you know, we, we are definitely going to be getting Arya and John. Um, but next, we actually have a picture of Daenerys who we just spoke about, and look at her outfit. Like this is. It's beautiful. It's it's uh it's not the the white version that we saw her have previously. It's bl- black and and looks like, it looks kind of red, but it's black. Um, and there's it's it's beautiful. It's, it's got dragon scales. It looks warm, and she she's looking beautiful as always. She's looking very happy in this scene. So I'm wondering what's going no, that's on. That, that's that half. It's it, to me, that's kind of a Daenerys, like the half smile, like the half truth. Like she's playing the game of wits with somebody at the moment. Right. The question smile, like, okay, no, where are you going with this? So, so the being courteous, like someone may in fact be being rude to her and she's just like, you know what I mean? Uh, T- or taking it as a queen and yeah, she, going really. Okay. Is this like so? I don't can't really see what's in the background here. This is, I don't know if this, this. I think this might be. Is this a one one on one conversation? Is this in uh, the, the the? This the, might be in the what? great hall. I'm looking at the archway behind us, which is really the only thing that you can make out in the picture over her. What yeah. is that? Right right shoulder, left shoulder over her yeah. left shoulder. As we're looking at it, uh, you, you see an archway. So I'm wondering if this might be in the great hall. That would kind of be my guess. Yeah, this this one this one is a little bit more difficult to see what's really going on. I'm zooming in here, but Amelia Clark is absolutely looking fantastic in this scene. And it Love looks like the it. sleeves are reinforced with leather. If you go down, yeah, it's it's this burgundyish red kind of color that's mixed in with the black. Definitely right. like that, it, and, and which the, is color- perfect for House Targaryen. I mean, that's smashing fashion for the North. And 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 actually. Uh, reflection of the colors of Drogon, which mm-hmm. I so that's that's cool. The the mother of dragons looking great in this scene. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that she's probably talking to someone like maybe 
Sir Davos, Sir, Sir Davos, or so, someone is is trying to make her feel comfortable in Winterfell in this scene. I could be wrong, but um, that would certainly be everybody's favorite dad in Westeros, uh, <laughs> Davos Seaworth. Yeah, I I don't know who's who's. I mean, it looks like she's or or maybe she's just admiring the beauty of Winterfell. She's never been there before. This is it, we don't really know what's going on here, but love the outfit, and uh, it's certainly different than the one um, she she will be received in i believe because that is that is going to be the one that uh, evokes a lot of the the night queen-esque theories that have been um thrown out there yeah absolutely or this could you know what um the next photo is actually sansa this could be this could be maybe the like the the same scene sansa is looking like onwardly like a little bit snootishly maybe this is the same scene and this is this is going to be her questioning and trying not to undercut John's authority. If they keep playing on that trope that they did on on last season of undermining him in front of uh, the other small houses, I don't think she's going to do that again. I don't I, think so either. I really hope not. Anyway, I think that I, I think we're you know I'm I'm going to go on a limb here and say Sansa is going to be one of the MVPs of season eight. Um, Sophie Turner is, is going to kill it, but I, I really think we're going to see a transformation in Sansa, uh, a maturity. She's still going to have some of those qualities that people might not like in Sansa, but she's learned to be more pragmatic. I mean, L Littlefinger told her, fight every battle in her mind to be skeptical, like, you know, don't trust everyone. I, I think that she, she will obviously do that, but she will also realize how important it is to. The, 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 for the Starks to be supporting each, each other, essentially. Right. Uh, uh, you know, the the lone wolf dies and the pack survives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's been the mantra from the very beginning, and that's led to us speculating that uh, the three-eyed crow is the lone wolf, and he's going to have to die for the pack to survive, which is a whole different side of the house theory. Um, obviously, we don't know anything for sure. This is not... Um, spoilers or, or anything of that sort right we're merely speculating on what we're being given this is nothing is final maybe we hope we're right but we have no idea ultimately right we next have jamie lannister who will be uh going to con thrones which we'll be talking about in just a little bit uh jr but this could be actually daenerys and jamie meeting they're both smiling and jamie killed daenerys's father and daenerys acknowledged the fact that her father was wrong so this Correct. could be a scene where they are Th this awkward scene where they are trying to get to know each other and talk to each other and they are uh, <laughs> trying to be positive despite what has happened. Uh, yeah, in, in spite of everything, he's the only one that's holding a, his more, true to his words of aiding Winterfell and aiding uh, Danny's uh, court. Uh, Cersei obviously isn't coming. They now know that. Uh, we, you know, you still have the theory of the back end deal with Tyrion and Cersei, which but, I think is complete baloney. Yeah, um, I'm not I don't too, think Tyrion. I'm not I don't too think Tyrion, on it. I'm not. I don't think Tyrion would betray Jon and Daenerys for Cersei. Come on, no, not for Cersei. For for anybody else, maybe. But you know, er, and everybody kind of puts the linchpin on this one is uh, the last time that the Lannisters were in Winterfell, sitting at a table in the Grand Hall. Uh, having a conversation about Bran and being a cripple and uh, how much I love my family. You so, wound me, brother. Yeah, it's that line. And that's what a lot of people are hanging this on with uh, that Tyrion loves his family more than he loves his new duty or his new station. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would disagree. It's the only time he's been given real power that isn't of Tywin's uh he was so blown, or maneuvering. He was so blown away by what Daenerys did for him. Like I don't, I just can't, I just can't see him doing that. That's just, I, I mean, like e even even after all that, it, like Daenerys, like it was like, yo, you earn this, <laughs> okay? Like this wasn't just me giving it to you. This, like, you, you deserve this. So yeah, I don't think, so I don't think that that's gonna happen with Tyrion. This is, but this is really interesting. Jr. His armor was it looks. R really similar to something that we've seen in the show before. Right. And, and a lot of people are speculating about uh, it being 
Rob's armor from the twins and then mm. Jamie would stop at the twins is can kind of ridiculous to begin with. I mean, he might ride the bridge, but that's about it. He's not hanging out to talk. Well, and maybe he is, I don't know. He's going to find what everybody did. And Admir, uh, Admir, I don't know. Okay. That's, that's just where I was going to go with this. Cause I know we're going to talk about that article next from watchers on the wall. Um, but Admir Tully is listed in the credits for the first episode. So maybe they did do hang out at the twins for a minute and Tobias pick, Menzies, pick up Edmure. Right? Tobias yeah. Menzies, yeah. Yep. So maybe we we are getting Edmure and we're not entirely sure why. So maybe this is part of Jamie and Edmure, and maybe this isn't at the Great Hall at all. Because we've previously speculated that Jamie might not show up until episode two. And I and I think he has to show up at episode two because at the end of episode two i think we're going to have that ominous feeling that the, the night king is going to attack when i mean episode three has been widely rumored to be the battle at winterfell so i don't think they could wait any more episodes to like have them flee the north no um but quick comments on his armor it is slightly different from rob's it's very much in the northern style uh the pauldrons are a bit different than rob's they flare mm -hmm. out a lot more than yeah. rob's did uh the gorget is very similar but it's missing the higher collar that uh rob's had his actually had a stockard collar coming up but uh, it's very interesting that he's wearing a northern-esque armor to say the least right i mean he's not wearing uh, right it's very much a northern armor but if you're fighting a war in the north i mean you're not going to be wearing Oberyn martell armor are you <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean i mean it makes yeah. no sense you don't you don't wear arctic gear in the desert to fight a war and you don't conversely wear desert gear in the arctic to fight a war either but the uh his under doublet i think it's really interesting because it's different than the typical quilted pattern that you see of the stark soldiers and yeah. of the starks themselves this is it looks to be exposed plate now that might have the small pieces of plate uh are lashed together and then sewn onto the leather doublet, but it's not sandwiched and padded like the actual Stark ones are. So it's it's kind of interesting little variant showing, you know, he is an outsider, but he's trying to blend in. Yeah, he's smiling. This, I mean, these 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 darker photos, uh, Daenerys, we have Daenerys, Sansa, Jamie, we have Brienne and Davos coming up. I think this is all actually the same scene, and I think they're like someone is talking about something and they're all listening. Jamie could be smiling at Brienne too, because Brienne looks a little like she's looking at someone, she's staring. She knows right, this, this could is, be battle planning. Yeah, this could be something like that, or even um, this could be. The I mean Davos looks a little bit more shocked. This could be the announcement of who John actually is, or John and Daenerys are getting married, or something like that. It's, it's certainly interesting. But Jamie looks like he's happy to see someone. This it could be Brienne, but uh, you know there there there's a few possibilities. Next picture is Brienne of Tarth. She looks a little bit more serious in 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 this uh, moment. Some people think that she's looking at Sansa saying something that's a little snooty or something like that. I saw that that's been talked about. I don't, yeah. I, I don't necessarily think so. I think this could be her looking at Jamie and like, um, her not trying her? to have too much of a reaction, I guess. Right. Uh, it, it, it she is concerned. Something is happening. And she, she has a very concerned look on her face. They, I mean, like you said, this could be battle plans. This could be them talking about, uh, preparations. um, you know, you know, like, like, say, like, if they learn about like Cersei's going to attack or Euron, that's still a possibility with the Golden Company being in the first episode, uh, or the the leader of the Golden Company getting announced in the first episode. So there, there could be an announcement on something like that. But I, I think that this is all just, you know, John, John and Daenerys and everyone kind of going back and forth on battle plans. Yeah, and I think this is partially going to be that, but I, I think she's being might be given a role here that she's not entirely comfortable with too. It's a very concerned look, right? Like maybe she's being put in charge of, I wouldn't say the Vanguard because she would be very, very proud to take a Vanguard position in the defense yeah. of Winterfell. Uh, but maybe she's being told that she's going to remain a sword, uh, sworn sword to Sansa and not be in the fray, which would entirely piss her off. And, and she's got a Valyrian she, steel blade, right? So she's right. super important. Yeah, super important. And there's not many that have those uh, available to them. So uh, I think if she's being pushed back, she would be she would have that concerned look on her face. So I think that might be part of it in this. And then we have Sir Davos Seaworth. I don't know. I mean, there's an unsullied soldier behind him. I don't know. I mean, 
there's much to say about this picture other than he's listening and inquiring. He's someone that takes note of every word that is said. He, like I said, one of the one of the wisest, if not the most wise character. Uh, that 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 is a POV character, very very wise character. I mean, he, so something is going on here. He's just taking it all in. Yeah, he, he's taking mental notes of uh, everything and, and listening to everybody's side of it and what they want to do. And uh, he's dressed in very typical Davos clothing, uh, green, gray, and brown seem to be the primary colors for him. Uh, and there's no real big change here for Davos. Then we have Varys. He's outside. He's got his winter garb on. He is on looking to something. Is he maneuvering his way around like Littlefinger? Is like what? What's going it, on it, here? I know it kind of it kind of has that feeling, doesn't it? Like he is ominous, ominously looking out at something, uh, very auspiciously concerned. I mean, he always has that very kind of perplexing look on his face doesn't he he always he doesn't is, he doesn't go one he doesn't go too far one way or the other he kind of has that same look right it, it always it, he's very very calculated and he doesn't react like i would not want to play poker with varus I'll, I'll put it that way so before we get into the next couple of photos, we're actually going to do a, a little break here just in the moment. If you're enjoying this podcast and content, make sure you subscribe. Uh, we, we are going to be doing more podcasts like this one, so you can uh, like this video if you're enjoying the content and also subscribe to the channel, to not only Channel Azor Hype, but also Geek Chat One, which you can find the link to in the description of this video. So uh, Geek Chat One being a Facebook community and also a YouTube channel. JR, can you talk a little bit about your fandom page real quick before we get into the next set of photos? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's many fandoms and one big family on Geek Chat One. So we we there's everybody and everything for everybody in there. If, if you want to talk about Legend of Zelda, the original 8-bit NES game or NES game, uh, you can certainly you know go on diatribes with me about it. It's my favorite game ever invented. Uh, you know, and then we have fandoms from Supernatural to Thrones to Expanse. Uh, Expanse. Expanse is a big one. A lot of people are talking Expanse. Uh, we've turned a lot of people onto that show, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, you and I. You and I have been raving about it forever. Uh, it's it's Thrones Which, in space. Yeah, we're we're doing uh, our first podcast on that next week, so that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, Geek Chat One. Make sure you go check that out. Uh, and JR, you're also doing a giveaway for ev everybody that's part of the Geek Chat One community, subscribed, and also part of your Facebook community. That, that's right. We are going to be giving away a Kingslayer Pass because Mr. Nikolai Koster-Waldu is attending Con of Thrones 2019. Uh, it's going to be a whole package, including a picture and autograph session with Jamie Lannister. Uh, it's around $400 for the pass. What? We bought one to just give it away uh that and, is incredibly and, generous of you uh, yeah so it's it's really great we're looking forward to it and you know the, of course there's uh geek chat one swag that'll go with it and lauren is giving a copy of a locally produced comic book from scotland that's actually really great going into that package as well so it's over 400 dollars at this point i don't even know <laughs> yeah we, we haven't folded it all up yet but uh it's over 400 dollars in swag plus the pass uh, to meet Nikolai Coster Waldo and get your picture and autograph from him. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be pretty fantastic. And speaking of Con of Thrones, we have a picture of Samuel Tarly, John Bradley, who's also going. And in this picture, he looks really happy. Is this the Crypts of Winterfell? I mean, it's it's lit interestingly. Um, I don't know if it's the Crypts or it, it's it's somewhere in Winterfell. I don't know who he's I, talking I think to. It's, I think it's a library uh, of Winterfell because that's his happy place inherently anyway. And I think he's mm. seeing John for the first time. I don't think he was in the courtyard to receive... Daenerys and John, and I think this is the first time that they're ah. seeing each other. That's that. It's that warm look, that warm smile of seeing a brother that you haven't seen in so long, right? Yeah, or maybe it could be him and Daenerys. Like I said, John always comes back, so Samuel will be happy to see that John has survived. And yep. uh, I, oh my god, I cannot wait for them uh, to have a reunion. Um, yeah, I know we're be... excited about all the reunions, but I, I know I'm there's a... there's so many that you have to get done, right? There's some uncomfortable ones that have to get done, which are going to be great. Like but, I cannot uh... wait to see Little Bear and Jorah. Oh, that's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be tense for a minute, I'm guessing. But, the, you know, Samwell, Samwise Gamgee, Samwell Tarly, Jon Snow. Uh, I mean, Frodo Frodo being split into Bran and, and Jon Snow I've talked about quite a few times. So uh, 
Yeah, this this is. I think you're right on the money here. I, I think this has to do with John in the Crips or somewhere else, right? Or a library? Yeah, I mean, it is kind of lit like the Crips, isn't it? Looking at the well, archways and recessments. Well, what's interesting though is uh, in the other picture that's after this one, there's Bran, and it looks like this could possibly be the same room. Um, there by a fireplace, there's wood that's chopped up. There's candles in there, so maybe they are all in the same room. That this might actually be. Uh, them get uh, uh, Samuel meeting John, and then them telling John about uh, th th that this could be like when it happens. There's the beginning of it. Yeah. yeah, the beginning of it. But he's staring into the fire, though. Isn't that a little bit om ominous? Uh, I don't. I don't know. He looks. Is he reading visions? Is he turning into a, a worshiper? Oh, damn! Of the Lord? He's real. That, that's really interesting. He is looking into the fire, Bran. Not just going into the weird net, but looking into the flames. That this is going to be a really interesting scene. It is. Um, and then the last two photos we have before we uh, get into who's going to be in the premiere and some Con of Thrones stuff. And there's two photos of Daenerys and John. Uh, Daenerys and John on looking um, to something. John's outfit looks a little bit different here. So uh, it, not, it does. He's not armored. Or I don't know. This is. And then Daenerys is wearing her. Is this before they get to Winterfell? This might be. Uh, it, it, if the gods are good, this is going to be at White Harbor. Something I don't think like we'll that. get it, but I'm, I'm still going to bang on that one. I want it so bad, but it's not going to happen. I know it. But still, if this was White Harbor, I would be ecstatic. But he's not armored. He's not wearing a sword belt. He doesn't have long claw, and he doesn't have his dagger. Uh, kind and of they, auspicious, yeah. actually. So it's someplace that he's comfortable, but he has a concerned look on his face. Like maybe are they prepping a battlefield where they want to engage the Night's King? Uh, I, I don't know. This is. I think. Yeah. It's I think throwing this is me before. off. I think this is before they get to Winterfell, and yeah. uh, the, the, the or I don't know. This is quite interesting because I think that them arriving to Winterfell is going to be the first scene, but maybe we just get that a scene with them before they arrive to Winterfell, and like that because it ended with the wall falling, and then you know we can get this as like an open or something. John and Daenerys, and they and then the sec the picture after this looks like they are very much in love. Yes, this is a this is a loving conversation where they're probably throwing barbs back and forth, but in that loving kind of tit for attack kind of way, you know, when they're exchanging dialogue. Yeah, so really interesting photos. Um, and then, of course, we got the news. JR, this just came out. Which uh, who released this article? This was Luca. This is on uh, Valentine's Day on Thursday. This article was released. We'll put this also in the description of the video for those of you who want to go check it out. And um, it has the program details. Uh, the actors that will be in Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 1. Peter Dinklage is going to be in it. Uh, Nikolai, Lena Headey, who plays Cersei, of course. Amelia, Kit Harrington, Liam Cunningham, Sophie Turner, Maisie Williams. We have Natalie Emanuel, Alfie Allen. So we're going to see Theon, uh, whatever he's doing. John Bradley. We're going to see Braun. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Conleth Hill, Isaac Hempstead, right? Gren Gwendolyn Christie. We're going to see Rory McCann as the Hound, yes. Christopher gives you who plays torment so he maybe he arrives by the end of the episode or uh, like that's what we're thinking him and him and bedrick are going to be arriving together so him and barrack don darian we got richard dormer who we just talked about barrack jacob anderson carice van houten Ooh, melisandra what is she up to that's a big question mark i think we're going to see esos in the first episode i think we're going to anton lesser kyburn joe dempsey gendry Awesome. Gemma Whalen. So Which we're means gonna, we're going to get Yara. We're going to get y Yarsha. <laughs> y Yarsha. Yeah, we have a couple of days for uh, the hybrid mix of the show and book. So Pilu uh, Aspect. Pilu Aspect. So hopefully uh, Yara off. doesn't have her tongue cut out. R yeah, we're hoping not. Rupert Van Sittart. Who's that? Isn't that the leader of the Golden Company? Uh, Rupert Van Sittart. Yes. He, uh, so that's... Uh, 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 S. S. Stockworth. H Harry Strickland. There we go. Harry Strickland, right? So yep. uh, I believe that's who it is, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bella Ramsey. We know who that is. Little Liana Mormont. Richard Rycro Rycroft. Who is that? Who's Rycroft? Let's let's look that up right now. Okay, I'm actually not sure. Oh, that is the Maester. That is Maester. Uh, I believe is Welkin. Well, kid, okay, the, the new yeah. one, okay. Megan Parkinson. Who's Megan Parkinson? Uh, I'm looking. Oh, she's... um. 
No, Rock, Mark Rissman is Harry Strickland. Mark Rissman is Harry Strickland. So uh, Megan Parkinson, I believe she plays um, Alice Karstark. She is going to be in the episode as well. So that's really okay, and we're assuming that they're going to get rolled over by the Night's King. Harry Grasby, I believe that is uh, the young Umber. Yep, that's the yep. young. So that's going to be really interesting. Maybe we will see them. Like, I hope that they are at Winterfell, but we could see them possibly be getting taken by or getting killed by the Night King. We have Ben Crompton, who, who in, is Ed, a toilet. A toilet. Ed, Ed Eddard. Um, I believe he is going to die in the first episode. Sorry, everyone. Tobias Menzies. So who's that? That's Edmir Tully. Yeah, Tobias Menzies. Uh, so, Edmir uh, Tully, last seen at the Twins at the Red Wedding. Lino Fazioli. Oh, no, he, no, he came out when uh, during the Siege of River Run. I forgot. Lino Faccioli, by the way, is guess who? We're seeing Sweet Robin in the first episode. So yep. that's – and then uh, I believe we have Staz Nair, and I think he's uh, he's one of the uh, Dothraki. He's yeah, he's, the, he's a blood rider. He's, he's one of the originals. Yeah, so uh, a, lo a lot of really interesting people are going to be in this episode. Uh, did we miss anyone? Oh, we have Hapjord Bjornsson, who is, uh, of course, uh, the mountain uh, as well. So that's that's going to be really interesting. Um, lots of... Uh, Stasnayer is uh, Kono, by the way. I always forget some of the insulates names. But that's a really... I mean, we're having some um, some interesting people. Uh, that are also going to be uh, in the episode. Uh, Mark Rissman is not in the episode. Um, so perhaps that's, or, or maybe they're just not listing him as a surprise. And Vladimir Furtick as the Night King. Um, also not listed. Yeah, so it, it's, I mean, I think we're going to see the Night King in the first episode. Uh, yeah, you kind of kind of have to in this, or at least see the movement of the army, which is maybe that's what they're going to do instead. So uh, going to be really interesting. So maybe we will see Jamie. Find Edmir and bring him back to the north. They, I mean, Edmir could already be in the north, you know, and or um, you know, John sends out ravens to the realm again uh, to try to connect everyone again. Um, we we already had the dragon pit, but that certainly could be a scenario that we see. Uh, yeah, there's any number of possibilities. The the other ones that are everybody kind of is worried about seeing or not seeing uh, the Hodor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are speculating that we'll see Hodor again, which I really hope not. Let let him die a noble death and, and just let it go. I don't want to see a white Hodor, do you? I I I, I don't I think we're gonna get it. But by the God. way, R Rupert, who I interviewed at Con of Thrones a couple years ago, uh, he is Bronzion Royce. I can't believe I forgot that. Rupert, he Bronzion Royce will also be in the episode. So that's really interesting. We're gonna uh, move on from this section, Jr. I really episode. I mean, fifty six. What is it? Fifty six or fifty seven days now? Uh, to the premiere. Yeah, we are at uh, fifty seven days to the premiere of Game of Thrones. So we're we're it's it's not that far away. Less than two months. JR. Um, yep. Big announcements like we talked about earlier. John Bradley and Nikolai will be attending Con of Thrones 2019. This is huge. I'm super excited. Why is this great news, JR? Uh, we are getting a, a, these are going to start rolling out now. We're, we're getting into the con season. We're inside 150 days till Con of Thrones 2019, uh, which obviously Kyle and I are both attending um, and working on programming for everybody that's attending the con. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes for it, obviously. Uh, we're super excited. Getting uh, these these bigger names that haven't attended before uh, is really fantastic. Uh, I think this year's Con of Thrones is very smartly uh, booked. Uh, it happens to be the week before San Diego Comic-Con. So I think mm -hmm. we're getting a lot of the, the transfer, like, hey, make a, a two-week run uh, for pressers uh, and make the con circuit in those you know couple of weeks in the States, right? And yeah, I think that's what we're reaping the benefits anymore, of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There's the NDAs are out the window. Um, every, they're off contract at this point. It's already been aired. And now we get to talk to uh, actors who we previously didn't get probably because of those non-disclosure agreements and worried about spoilers because let's face it, we're pretty good at interviewing people and we're pretty good at uh, extracting information, aren't we, Kyle? <laughs> yes, I think so. Um, really exciting, obviously. And, the, you know, the, the, the hype will be continuing for a couple of months, I assume, after Thrones has ended. So that's, uh, 
you know, they, they want to also, I think HBO also wants to capitalize on that, have their people out there and they want to make sure, I mean, we're going to have way more information about the prequels by then too. So Correct. that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a huge, huge get. John Bradley, Samuel Tarley, and Nikolai. Nikolai is one of the like the main characters. So to get like one of the, I think he's one of the top five paid actors on the show. Period. Yes. So, so yeah, dude, that, he's definitely is, in the top five. So I, I think that that I think Nikolai is the big one, and then we have John, and then we're gonna have some other ones as well. I don't necessarily know that we're gonna get a Kit Harrington or something like that, but I will take whatever we can get. And I think that you know we'll have some returnees like uh, the Sam Coleman's of the world, uh, the Young Hodors, hopefully a Kate Dickey, people like that. Perhaps yeah, Kate people- Dickey would be great. Uh, who unfortunately missed last year because she had a death in the family and actually took the time to record a video apologizing to all of us at the con for not being able to make it. We I love- really. T- touching i mean she loves this fandom and uh we know obviously we are we were lucky enough to uh uh i was lucky enough to interview sabelle last year who played shay uh mm-hmm. also uh, esme who played Roz. got to interview uh miltos who played Sirio pharrell i got to interview him for the second time so got to so got to hang out with joe dempsey gendry for uh, a little bit yeah, for I got a I got a five minute time slot with uh, Joe, so that that was really cool. And and, and yeah. him and and uh, Hannah Murray were the only two that were filming uh, for season seven and eight uh, that were at the yeah. con last year. They were the yeah. only two that were still a lot. actively filming. Yeah, so that was so really interesting. I mean, it's it's gonna be all done. It's I mean, we're we're gonna have more of these uh panels and content and of course um get get togethers where we're reliving the moments as opposed to making predictions yeah oh absolutely and we're gonna we're gonna start pushing a new hashtag on geek chat one which is for the con getting ready and (laughs) ramped up for con of thrones 2019 so anytime we're talking about it you'll see that new hashtag for for the con um, we are going to be doing some special uh, podcasts and Patreon content. JR and me and a few others will be staying together at Con of Thrones 2019. Correct. Um, so, so we don't want to spoil too much for you, but we're going to be doing some extracurricular activity. Uh, of course, I believe... Uh, you haven't started your GoFundMe, but Gemma has. I will be starting a GoFundMe in the near future. Uh, so we're going to have some special content that we're going to be uh, giving out to people who... Uh, make donations like that and whatnot that are hugely supportive and 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 uh and reasons why why we can go to these conventions at all so thank you so much of course everyone that supports our community um and in this in this podcast we're going to continue to do these i think we're going to release them on sundays jr yeah um uh robert indeed geek is going to join us next week uh so announcement there we're going to have our uh, uh special guest on the podcast which is going to be really nice we haven't decided what we're going to talk about um but that's going to be really interesting so anybody that has signed up for patreon will uh we're going to do one featured question a podcast or two featured questions uh from patreon so if you are signed up on patreon you can uh get your question featured in the podcast so uh, you can find the link to the azola hype patreon in the description of this video if you would like to support the channel any uh final thoughts about con of thrones jr before we move on to our outro here uh no I, i'm just super excited for it i can't wait to to see everybody again and hang out with everybody who's coming for the first time a lot of a lot of first time uh con attendees uh seem to be popping up between uh fans of uh, azora high hype and uh geek Ooh, chat did one. you just call you- me azora high i gotta I, I don't know are, 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 you might be the blade for the kingdoms woo woo uh yeah, I, I'm getting really excited. There's a lot of people coming from Geek Chat One that are are super stoked about it, and they're asking a lot of great questions. So, uh, on Geek Chat One, we're actually going to do a How Do Con of Thrones video. Uh, LMR and I have done one previously, but when these announcements start coming out, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of those, and then we're going to talk about the area in Nashville. And I'm working on getting a special guest that lives in the area, but I'm not going to give too much away about that. But that should be coming up on Geek Chat One YouTube. Uh, here shortly so yeah that's what we got going on awesome so that's really exciting you know i'll be on a couple panels we'll be on a couple panels together yes Um, we are uh we we don't we can't release what we're going to be talking about or whatever uh but you know uh, i put i i applied for a few more panels uh 
uh, to talk about. So uh, really exciting. Hope, hopefully they get approved. Talking with some other content creators, trying to get some collaborations going. Of course, subscribe to Geek Chat 1, everyone. Uh, we're trying to get JR monetized. Uh, JR, you're at three, uh, 636 subscribers. So if you're watching this podcast and uh, you're enjoying what JR has to say, uh, big part of this community, go subscribe to his channel. You can find the link in the description of this video. What's happening next for you, JR? Uh, well, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, let's see, well, not tomorrow morning, East, uh, East Coast time at noon, we'll be doing our Geek End News Review, which is Lauren and I from Lauren's Corner, going yep. over any geeky news that has come out in the last week. We do that every week, uh, and try to bring you little nuggets of goodness from fandoms uh, across the globe and galaxy. Awesome. And uh, you will see more videos from me. I'm finally feeling better, ready to start creating content again. This podcast is just the start of that. We will have, of course, our live streams that we do. Uh, I got some upcoming videos for you guys that I've been working on. So happy to be back and uh, happy that there's sunlight after 6 p.m. Uh, where I'm living. <laughs> that, that certainly helps me get more motivated. Uh, the fact that I am getting some vitamin D and not getting my soul crushed by the lands of always winter every day so uh thanks for joining me today jr thanks to everyone that is listening if you have any questions or comments about uh what we talked about today specifically the pictures i mean let us know your thoughts in the comment section predictions that you have any theories that you might have but what we talked about today of course if you're excited for con of thrones leave your hype in the comment section and uh, any ideas oh, don't forget don't forget if you have not purchased your ticket yet uh, you can go on to uh, Conference 2019 and purchase and use the uh, code word is hype, right? Uh, Azor, A Z O R. So, uh, so you get a five dollar discount, a little bit of a, a bonus discount there. And if we, if we, I believe we've got a few that we sold so far, but if we get to twenty five, they get to give away uh, two day passes. So, uh, code Azor, A Z O R. If you uh, want to buy your Conor Thrones ticket, and like I said, uh, if we get twenty five sold. I believe that we have a few so far. Um, and uh, I, I wish I would have known that before I bought the uh, <laughs> Nikolai Coster Waldo pass. <laughs> <laughs> the, the five dollars, right on the four hundo. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so anybody that is going to Conthrones, make sure you use the code Azor. Uh, and we will hopefully be able to get, get give away some tickets. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Really, really appreciate, like I said, Jer, my co-host joining me today. Uh, excited to be back creating content again. Like I said, we're only 57 days out. That's It's just insane. And uh, once it's gone, it's gone, people. So let's celebrate together. Let's get hyped together. And uh, of course, uh, like I said, if you enjoyed this podcast, you will be seeing more of us. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. And uh, yeah, JR, how about you do the sign out today? Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And we will catch you next week with another update from a Bronze and Iron. Hype and love. <laughs> Hype and love.